Talking about Silva, uh, what did you think about the uh, uh, PED announcement from uh, last week from the UFC? Um, it's very unfortunate, you know. Uh, hats off to you know the drug testing for catching them, you know. Um, but you know, I, it's very unfortunate. I mean, what else can you say about it? And the extra testing you want to do, you, you, you agree with it? Yeah, absolutely. I got tested six times when I fought um, Chris Carriasso. I mean, the guy showed up at my house. He came in, offered me a peach. We had lunch. We had breakfast together, and. He took my blood and left and came back again. We had another peach. Um, it was in season, I guess. And then when I showed him Vegas, right, right after I got off the plane, he goes, dude, where, where, where are you at? And I was like, just got off the plane. He goes, meet me at the hotel. I was like, sounds good. Came to my room, talked, took my blood again. I mean, so I got tested six times. I had no problem with it. Didn't, you know, say no or recall or anything. He came, took my blood, left. Everything was good. And did you feel is there's a real issue with PEDs in your sport? I, I mean, everybody calls it an issue. I mean, absolutely it's an issue, but at the same time, like, you know, people talk about all the time, you know, why the fighters use it. I mean, it's it's to keep their body, you know, the long enough you train, your body's going to deteriorate. I mean, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Like, that's just science. Like, you, the harder you train, the more you break down your body. So people are using that stuff so they can keep it so they don't break their bodies out. So they go out there and perform and put on great shows, you know? Like I remember one guy says, um, I don't know if he was a pet user, but he was like, if you guys want to keep putting on these shows and beat our bodies up, we got to use it. And I was like, you seem like you're one of them. <laughs> so I, I understand why they use it. I don't use it because I don't believe in it. You know, I, I look at the long term to where, you know, if I were to stop, if I wanted to walk away from mixed martial arts today, you know, I'll be 100% healthy and clean. Whereas, like, if I was to use it, you know, you see guys, oh, I've used it in the past, got away with it, oh, now I need TRT, oh, I can't use TRT, I'm gonna have to do the, the, the old fashioned way. And so, I, I just, I mean, it's not an issue in my life, so I don't consider it an issue. Can you just say, I would never come up to you though, and your career maybe offer you something, nope. maybe after you lost I don't hang out, I, I don't hang out with stupid people. Okay, but so, like, not even after maybe like the crew's lost, no, nope. this could take you to the next level type thing? Nope. You know? Like I said, I don't hang out with stupid people. My, my coach has never used it. People, I, I mean, the people I, I surround myself with are daily working, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Like, half the guys I train with and spar to get ready for my fights, they, they go to school, they work at, you know, uh, you know, big corporation jobs, doing taxes and stuff. So, you know, those guys who, you know, you have camps where it's like, everybody here, we're all professional fighters, we're all trying to make it in the world. So there's gonna be a little bit more, I guess you say, somebody come into that camp with an incentive, but if you have, you know, just me and Carol Svador, who are like in the big leagues and the big show, they come to the camp and like, hey guys, I got some new stuff in stock for you. Take a look. Let's take it to the next level. How many of you guys you got here? Just two. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably not going to be worth their time, but nobody's ever came to me and asked me that stuff because, like I said, I don't hang out with two people. That was your, what was your opinion of Anderson Silva uh, and did this opinion change since maybe the last two weeks? Is it my opinion on him? Yeah. Um, no, it hasn't changed. I mean, it's, like I said, it, it's very unfortunate and like, just the fact that, you know, it was caught in the system, it's just like, I mean, what, what else? Has your opinion changed on him? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's... He was considered one of the best of all yeah, time and, 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 and the and face he, of this organization and now it's all gone. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, that's what I mean like that. It's like, he just made one mistake and you guys took everything he did, his credibility away. So that's why, I, you know, sometimes I have a hard time letting myself go and letting you guys get to know who I really am because I make one wrong, I don't want to say wrong move, but one thing can alter your perception, your perception of that person. To where uh, Anderson Silva did amazing things in the, in the octagon, whether he was on um, peds or not. I mean, he still got to go in there and kick the guy in the face. I mean, you still got to uh, line up the shots and be able to take the angle and stuff. So it's not like he just took peds and he, he wouldn't knock the guy and goes, oh, this is what I got to do. Blah, 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 and, and, and do it. And so he still has to train. It's just like bodybuilders. Yeah. Yes, you know, uh, Ronnie Coleman and those guys, yes, they took steroids to get that huge, but they still had to go in the gym and put in their work and effort. Now, with me being saying all that doesn't mean I'm not, you know, endorsing people to take PEDs and do all this stuff. I'm just saying that just because he took, you know, steroids and PEDs, yes, he did cheat. And, and if it, you know, showed him his, his, uh, his analysis and all that stuff and results, yes, he did cheat. But he still had to put the work in the gym to get himself to the fight, you know. That basically just gave him the extra boost to train harder in the gym, 
to, to get through those ach aching injuries, to, to, to push 110% every single time in the gym. But at the end of the day, he still had to go to the octagon and knock this person out. So he still deserves some credit for what he did in yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. You know, he, I mean, you know, you look at Abu he still went through all the training. He still was on EPO. Didn't mean he was going to whip my ass, but I went out there and used what I do well and took my angles and took it to him. There's just a difference. Do you think MMA is becoming too much about entertainment and not enough about the sport? I think so. I, I, I truly believe that. Um, you know, when I jumped in this sport, you know, the one thing that attracted me to this sport, it wasn't all the, the bad talking and people disliking each other and all that stuff. What attracted me to the sport is, was the workout and the work ethic the fighters had. Um, I didn't care about beating up people. Um, so that's what got me into the fighting sport. And when I first jumped into it, you know, I had my amateur fight, my professional fights, and all that stuff. But now you're starting to get to a point where, you know, I've been to meetings and they're like, you see this person right here? I'm not going to say names. You see this person? This person is very reliable to us because we are trying to break into this market. So if you can make yourself as viable as this person, you're going to make a whole lot more money, whether this person is good or not. So for me, when, you, when you, you're in a meeting and you see something like that, and it's like, hmm, I don't know how to feel about that. But it's, it's starting to get to that point, which I understand because the sports kind of grow and break into markets. You know, if if the UFC wasn't as entertaining or as exciting, you know, would they be on Fox? I mean, you know, obviously Fox jumped, up, jumped behind us because they see it's the future of combat sports, which I truly believe it is. And I think it's getting to that point, but you still see there's fighters who stay true to the, I don't want to say the code, but hey, I'm here to fight. I'm here to show that I'm the best in the world. You're not going to hear me talk smack about Koji or Gucci or anybody else that I fight, I'm gonna go out there and perform. You never wanted to play that game? Never wanted to, no. Like if I truly, that's, you know, when I start talking, disliking somebody, I'm taking it to a different level. Like you see people when, you know, like when Ronda and Misha Tate fought, and the second time after she beat her, she shook her hand, she goes, no, I don't like you, like, I don't like you. So for me not to like somebody, like, I don't think I can fathom to fight them because I don't want to fight them, I want to, it's, it's gonna do more, I don't want to do that. Like, so that's where I go. When I dislike somebody, I'm taking it to that level where it's like, dude, it's, yeah, it's not gonna be good. So you, you don't want to name names, but I'm gonna name one. Okay. Conor McGregor, how do you think the UFC is promoting? He's good, he's fantastic. Like I said, you know, he, he's, he's, he talks good. He, he also gonna fight good. And Dana White came out and said it straight. He goes, if this guy can fight as good as he talk, he's gonna make a whole lot of money. And I think it's awesome. He's fantastic. I'm a fan of his. He's a great fighter. Um, the first time I ever saw him fight, fight, you know, I saw how he controlled distance and how he was a good counter puncher. And I was like, this guy's good. He's gonna be good. You think he beats yeah. Aldo as well, or? It's gonna be <laughs> tough. The one thing he poses to Aldo that nobody has ever done. I mean, Chad Mendes did it, but I don't think Chad Mendes has to strike in that Conor McGregor does and the length and how big he is. Is that Aldo has never fought somebody who comes forward the whole time. He comes forward and understands range and distance. Um, so that's going to be the biggest test. Um, but we're going to have to find out, like like I said, it's it's going to be a tough fight. CM Punk, what do you think of a guy like that being brought in? Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's awesome that, you know, they let him in, you know, like, it, the way I can look at it is that if I was a guy off the street and I was like, Dana White, I want to test myself in the UFC or anybody, you know, would it, he had the biggest jump, like, you know, uh, would I have this big jump as CM Punk did? Probably not, but obviously, you know, he, he got in, he's in, and we're gonna see what happens, but. But it's, it, isn't it a little bit sad to think that people might be more interested in paying to see this guy than to see it's, it's It's all it's all what type of cup of tea they want. So if they wanna have, you know, they wanna see CM Punk fight, then that's fantastic, you know, nothing wrong with that, and that's totally fine. It doesn't frustrate you at all. I mean, it, you can look at it as, as frustrating, but at the same time, it's that you, UFC is a business, and they're trying to, you know, gain a lot of fans, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I could, if I went to Dana White, I was like, Dana White, how are you going to sign Team? You know, I would do that. Next time I see Dana White, I'm going to go, Dana White, you know, before that, me, like, how are you going to sign Team in Punk, homie? Hmm? He had one fight in the UFC. How are you going to sign him to the best, biggest organization in the world? How are you going to do that? Legitimate question. We'll, we'll have to ask him that, that question next time and see what he says. Mm. Would you have signed him? No. To any deal? No. no. I, I just think there's, I mean, a lot of fighters say that he's not taking anybody else's spot in the USC roster, which is absolutely true. But for me, if I have the best organization in the world and I want the best fighters in the world, I'm going to pay top dollars to get that talent over a guy like that. Like, I would have signed a top talent at the 135 pound division to come here and fight to whereas he's fighting middleweight. 
middleweight to where those guys that had big enough fish to fight. And I'm looking at it as a long-term investment. You know, if, if I was building my organization, obviously I'm not, and I'm a fighter. And you know, other promoters are like, that's a dumbass decision you're making. Because you get this guy for a lot cheaper than you can get. So, you know, I, I'm a fighter. But as for me, looking at, I, I hold UFC as a, at the top of the pinnacle of the sport um, organization to sign someone who's never had a, one amateur fight or sparred. It's it's kind of hard for me to. If I was a president, to sign that. To like, okay, I'm good with that. It's not great for the credibility of the sports either. I mean, at the same time, like, I mean, he's gonna do well. I hope he does well. You know, I have nothing against him in the UFC at all. Don't don't take that. Don't take me my response to it. Uh, hating on him, but that's just me as a, an athlete responding. It's like you don't see me. You know, some Nate Diaz is like, dude, I want to play basketball. Why don't somebody sign me? I would love to run the football for the Seattle Seahawks. You know, they, they don't sign me, you know. They, they, just because they're professionals, they've gone through college, high school, middle school to play at the biggest organization in the world in football. So I had dreams I was talking to, but they didn't sign me. So. What makes uh, Horaguchi unique as an opponent? Um, <clears throat> what's different from Horaguchi from the last guys I fought is uh, Oji Jung. Um, He's very athletic. Um, he likes a lot of distance when he mm -hmm. fights from his opponents. Um, so it's a little bit different, you know. Usually when I fight, you know, when I was fighting at 35, I used a lot more footwork to negate, I guess you say, fighting. Um, my opponents try to trick him and stuff. With a Horaguchi, you, you can kind of see that he um, he has uh, he uses the footwork a lot. Do you take any extra sense and pride in beating Bagatina? Like he was on EPO. Like, do you take any extra sense and pride you can beat someone on PEDs? I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, you know, I still have the same pride as when I beat him before. Right. Uh, you know, when somebody called me, like, you know, Eric Hawani texts me on the blue. He goes, dude, you hear what happened to Ali Bagatina? I was like, no, what happened? He goes, he popped for EPO. How do you feel about that? And I was like, dude, I'm playing video games right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, that's awesome, but right. it sounds good. So, obviously, if I would have lost, it would have been a totally uh, situation, but I did it, so I, I have the same pride. I mean, I guess that's a little cap on my head that, you know, I, I pushed the guy five rounds and walked out on Scave, who was on EPL. Some fans are curious about your ethnic background. Like, what's your ethnic background? Um, as far as I know, it's black and white. Okay. 100% um, black, 100% white. Mom was full black, that was half, so you get 25, you get 50 50 of both, so there you go. John Dodson has said recently saying that you're not doing a good enough job to uh, market the division because you're the champion, it's your job. And you're well, if you finish reading the article, he says it's up to other flyways to do the same thing. So for me, I'm doing my job, which is go out there and, and beat them up. You know, I beat him up. I beat up all the beat Tina, beat up Joseph. Who else like I beat up to do my job? So, um, you know, I'm here, I'm doing media. I'm open to you guys, I'm answering all your questions. and. What, what, what more else do you want from me, I guess? How, how should I, how no, can I, I agree. How, no, how can I do a better job? I'm not criticizing oh, okay. at all, I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, is it, just is it, is it part of you, your job to maybe to uh, hype for a uh, super fight with uh, Alicia? That, was it part of your job or when you did that? No, 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 somebody, so this all started from a question, just like you asked a question for me. Somebody asked me a question, they're like, would you ever, you know, contemplate fighting teach Dillashaw? And I was like, two million dollars, yeah, why not, you know? And then people were like, oh, they, and then, Look how much buzz, it, I mean, you just asked me that question. It's getting so much buzz, and people are wanting to fight, obviously, down the road. If, it, if Dana White comes to us and offers it to us for the right purse, then I don't see why not. Why two million? Why two million? So a lot of people say that's a lot of money. For me, what I do in the training that involves in this stuff, I want to be compensated for my skills that I bring to the octagon, how hard I'm going to train for this fight, and there's never been once in the UFC, according to my knowledge, Two champions, you know. I've different. This would be my sixth title defense. You know, if I if I defend this, it'll be my sixth one. There has never been a chance that two champions have actually came and fought. Everybody talks about it. They always, oh, geez, you know, stuff. Let's make it happen. Like, I'm sure TJ's up for it. I'm up for it. Did Did you saw him back there? Is it the yeah. first time you you talked to him uh, since this no, came out? No, me and TJ, we're, we're we're cool. You know, we're cool. I mean. There's no bad blood against us. You know, we're two athletes that are trying to make it in the world to secure our future. And obviously, people want to see us fight. So let's make it happen. I mean, obviously, I'm healthy. He's healthy. And 
besides all that super fight talk, you know, the, the most important task at hand is me take care of Koji Horiguchi. But look at me on that. If I am successful at UFC 186, which I hope I am, then if that top comes up, that is the reason why I'm saying, you know, be compensated for $2 million. It's like, if, if Anderson Silva and Nick Diaz could come off a layoff for three years and he get paid what he did, and after watching that fight, I'm sorry, but my skill set I bring to Octagon with my wrestling, my Muay Thai, my striking ability, all the stuff I bring.